Hi, I'm Dr. Lorian Pratt. I'm with Quantelia. This video shows how a decision model can help us to understand the impact of donations to a program like the Carter Center's Community Justice Advisor Program. The Carter Center is an NGO that operates in a number of countries. Here we're focusing on Liberia exclusively, which is a small country in Western Africa. Liberia has faced substantial challenges um, in the wake of conflicts that ended over the last few years and is working hard to become a democracy. The Carter Center's been helping. In the Community Justice Advisor Program, trained paralegals visit remote rural locations and help the people there uh, with legal disputes. They'll help either plaintiffs or defendants to, uh, in a variety of ways, either in providing mediation services or also helping them navigate a fairly complex legal system which uh, has two parts. There's a formal system as well as an informal system. In this video, we show a decision model that illustrates how uh, the CJA program's expansion has a number of follow-on effects within Liberia. And we'll be going into the details of this model later on, but for now I'm going to just run the model and let you see how it plays out. I'll draw your attention to a couple of things. First of all, this is the economic health of Liberia here. Notice how it's going from red to green. And also these other factors, law enforcement, corruption, the crime rate, and legal resources. On a county by county basis, those are also turning green as a result of the impact of these CJAs. So let's do that one more time just so that you can see all of the details. Again, if we start over, we see that the economic health of Liberia as a whole is relatively low as indicated by the red color of many counties. There is corruption, issues with law enforcement, issues uh, with uh, the legal system as well as with crime. And according to this model, which demonstrates the impact of these CJAs, we can see these red colors turning to green um, and then also uh, various things improving, uh, in particular the economy uh, improving as the crime rate goes down, represented by this blue line. Law enforcement improves and the availability and effectiveness of legal resources also improves as shown by the red line. And uh, you can see now near the end of this model, things have steadied out and uh, everything's green. And in the rest of this video, we'll show you um, some of the impacts of how that happens, as well as the impacts of different decisions around uh, the amount of, of CJA help that uh, supports various counties across Liberia. So there's a lot of complexity in this model. Let's uh, drill into this and understand it piece by piece. So let's zoom into just part of this model and what you can see here is that I have what's called a lever that allows me to change the weekly expense, the weekly dollar amount that I spend on CJAs. And what you can see happening here is as I raise and lower this dollar amount, you can see that the allotment of uh, CJAs to different counties is changing. One thing I'll draw to your attention is that the amount of CJAs that are allotted to each county actually is different from one county to the next. So how do we make that decision? So I've added a couple of graphs to this chart that illustrates how this decision is made. The number of CJAs in this model is dependent on the crime rate in each of the counties. This graph shows each county as one of these blue bars and the current crime rate in this county represented is the height of that bar. And we'll talk about our source data in a little bit. Um, this graph shows the population in each county. And the way we determine the number of CJAs allotted to each county is based on those two factors. So you can see in particular that Monserrato County, which contains Monrovia, has both a high crime rate, but also a relatively high population and so it gets uh, allocated a larger number of CJAs, especially when there's a small dollar amount that's allotted on a weekly basis than other counties. So this model allows us to experiment with the impact of the CJA uh, allotment decision um, on a number of other factors, which we'll cover now. 
So let's start um, not just looking at this part of the graph and not looking at uh, the details of, of how this model operates. But I'm going to start that simulation again. But this time, instead of allotting uh, $50 per week to CJAs, we're actually going to allot zero. And so you can see this uh, motorcycle picture is very small in each county. So uh, take a look at how the red color changes to green when we don't have CJAs in place. And then also take a look at the economy and what happens to it, as well as these other factors that have an impact on the economy. So we're running the simulation, and uh, really um, there's, there's pretty much no change according to this model. Uh, the country still has an overall uh, economic issue, but as we increase the number of CJAs, um, what you see is the economy starts to improve. The green line crime rate starts to go down. Corruption decreases. And again, as we continue to increase the number of CJAs, we do see an improvement over time. Although, interestingly, there's an interesting dynamic here. Since we didn't start out with a lot of CJAs, there's a substantial expense um, on law enforcement and also on the legal system. So the economy actually doesn't grow as much because there aren't any dollars left over uh, for other economic growth factors. Pretty much we've gotten ourselves into a, into a situation where the majority of the dollars that are available um, are being used uh, exclusively uh, for controlling crime. So let's talk about the mechanism. Why is it that, um, according to this model, CJAs can substantially help in an environment? Well, uh, CJAs help to impact the crime rate, and we'll talk about um, how that happens in a moment. But the major dynamic here is that as crime decreases, that creates a more stable business environment, and so the economy can improve. An improved economy means that we have some money to spend on law enforcement, on legal resources, and on anti-corruption efforts. Those three uh, investments will feed back in reducing the crime rate, which in turn reduces economic health. So what we have is a feedback loop going on here, where lower crime improves the economy, which improves law enforcement, which in turn lowers the crime rate. And so we kind of go around in a circle here. Similarly, there's a second interacting feedback loop where economic health improves, uh, again, gives us resources to improve the legal system, which reduces corruption. And then that also helps us to improve the economy. So we have two kind of interlocking feedback loops. Think of this as the engine is a, of a car, and the CJA injection is a starter motor that we're using to, to get this feedback loop going, such that ultimately our goal is that a country like Liberia does not require external aid, but is healthy enough on its own, such that its economy can support a thriving uh, law and order community. So let's talk about the mechanism by which that investment in CJAs ultimately leads to a lower crime rate. If you'll recall, that was the main lever that we talked about previously, uh, was this investment in CJAs. Um, so as we make a weekly uh, investment in the CJA program, which uh, changes the number of folks that are working out in the counties, that has an impact on our cumulative investment. And that um, cumulative investment, you can see, is connected to the weekly expense. So as we spend dollars, we have more and more funds cumulatively available to them. And again, as we've talked about, there's a number of studies that have shown that uh, the more you have these paralegal professionals, uh, there's uh, increased trust in the legal system along a number of dimensions. Um, there's also additional studies that show that the more that folks trust in the legal system, the less likely they are to take the law into their own hands. And so if there are simmering ethnic and land disputes, as there are in Liberia, as well as many other uh, developing countries, we can decrease the likelihood that those simmering disputes actually escalate into criminal behavior if folks have a greater sense that the legal system is there to protect them. And so what's going on here is we spend money on CJAs, they have more money cumulatively, that impacts the overall trust in the legal system, 
which impacts the likelihood that simmering ethnic and land disputes um, will lead uh, to crime. Uh, now there are a variety of kinds of crime, ethnic and land disputes are just one, so there's also a baseline crime rate that is not influenced uh, by the impact that we've seen here. In addition, this trust in the legal system is also impacted by corruption and also uh, the availability and sophistication of legal resources, and we saw how those factors were also part of that previous feedback loop. So here what we're really showing is just kind of the chain of events that connects this weekly expense per CJA up to uh, the crime rate. And then if you recall what we showed earlier is that this crime rate is then kind of that, uh, the thing that starts that starter motor that gets these feedback loops going that is the crime rate lowers, economic health improves, and then that leads to the other, the other uh, factors improving as we saw earlier. So let's take a look at those same interactions and observe what happens with them uh, while the model is running. So these five elements that you see kind of tiny in the middle of the screen are the ones we showed a moment ago where crime rate has this feedback loop, has an impact on economic health, economic health impacts law enforcement, and, and then those kind of uh, support each other. Similarly, as the economy improves, we can reduce corruption, we have more legal resources, and those, of course, impact crime as well. So this is the graph we saw earlier. And then what you're seeing in the corners of this graph, these four maps of Liberia, are the county by county levels of law enforcement, corruption, the crime rate, and then legal resources. And again, these are based on some baseline studies that we'll show you in a moment. So in addition to these county by county graphs of these four factors, I've also shown a graph that explicitly calls out the trust index, the level of trust in each county, as well as that dispute to crime escalation likelihood. And uh, as we run the simulation, I'd like you to observe a couple of things. One is you're going to see a change in these blue bars, so you're going to see that trust index growing over time as the CJAs have a chance to be affected. Number two, you're going to see a change in the green bars. You're going to see a lower likelihood of disputes escalating into crime. And number three, you'll also see the colors of the counties changing, reflecting these various leading indicators to improved economic health. So let's uh, run the simulation and you can see all of those things happening. So we can see again the graphs we saw earlier, but we see uh, substantial improvement in this court's trust index. At the same time, the likelihood of a dispute escalating to a crime is, is lowering. That's these green bars. And then over time, you can see all of the counties in Liberia uh, turning green, indicating that we're really in a, in a new part of what you'd call state space, meaning that um, we've got this feedback loop going. The starter motor is done and uh, now we're able to um, really sustain ourselves uh, without outside intervention. And uh, let me show that. So as uh, we're watching this uh, simulation, I'm actually going to take the CJAs out of the equation here. I'm going to lower them. Um, and so we're no longer uh, making an investment in the CJA program. And what you can see um, is everything stays green, right? Um, the economy is still healthy, the legal system, corruption is still in a good place. Why is that? It's because really what we've done is, is again, like a starter motor might do. We've started the engine and now that the economy is healthy, the country can afford uh, to provide these kinds of services on its own, like we might see in a, in a developed country. And we've really shifted into a, a very new uh, place for Liberia where the economy is strong enough that it can sustain itself on its own. So let's talk uh, just briefly about the source of some of the data that's shown here. Um, this is a paper called Talking Peace in Liberia, published in June 2011 by the Human Rights Center at the University of California Berkeley School of Law. Patrick Fink, Huang Pham, and Tino Kreutzer were the authors. Um, this is probably, of, of everything we've read about Liberia, one of the most comprehensive um, uh, both data as well as qualitative analyses of what's going on. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of information here, again, on a county-by-county -county basis. 
as to uh, various factors like perceptions of former combatants, their security and crime, etc. This was the source of much of the data that we used in this analysis. And uh, basically what we did is we took uh, the data in that paper, uh, we copied it into uh, a number of worksheets on a spreadsheet, as you can see here, and then uh, through the data binding capabilities of this tool, uh, we basically read directly from that spreadsheet um, all of these various data sources that in turn feed the county by county information from each one of these sources. Another important uh, data source that we used here is this paper by Sandifer and Siddiqui called The Impact Evaluation of the Carter Center's Community Paralegal Program. These folks talk specifically about how when CJAs are in a region, they uh, create kind of a difference of differences. So what you can see is that um, any metric that you might measure is improving over time anyway, even without an intervention like the CJAs. But a CJA uh, program can have this kind of difference of differences impact. It changes the the rate of improvement of something. And um, so it was this kind of analysis that we used in a lot of those causative links in this model, showing how CJA investment impacted other factors. So just a little bit more on the kind of data that's used to support a model like this. This is what we call a hybrid qualitative slash quantitative model. And it's meant to illustrate some of the key system dynamics in a situation like Liberia but it is living in the absence of full studies that would give us time varying impacts of different interventions. So let's talk about what we mean in particular. Um, each one of these factors here, law enforcement, corruption, economic health, etc., has a different level in different counties. And so uh, the spreadsheet that we showed earlier uh, breaks that down. Um, in particular, the trust in the courts on a per county basis we uh, created as a function of the knowledge of the court system and also the belief uh, that folks have that Liberian judges are fair and impartial um, in their decision making. So what this is is something that reflects just that county by county breakdown in uh, the trust in the judiciary. Um, but what it doesn't tell us is how an intervention like the CJAs impacts that breakdown. And so remember we have this lever back here that we can move that says um, how uh, and, uh, that, that the simulation shows how that impacts uh, these various factors. Um, and for those, uh, there are not longitudinal time-based studies uh, that were available at the time of creating this model. Instead, we created uh, if impact curves um, on each of these lines that showed how each factor impacted another element uh, based on our experience uh, doing this in, in other uh, situations. So that's a place where making this more of a quantitative model would require coming up with a deep understanding of how these cause and effect links uh, play out. But really importantly, um, even in advance of that kind of hard data, we still have to make decisions. We still have to decide uh, how CJA's uh, investments should be done and uh, to measure the impact of those investments. And so it's important to be able to move forward uh, in the absence of, of comprehensive data, but based on our experience in other countries and in other similar situations, such that we can have a fairly rational reasoning structure about how uh, all of these things hook up, in particular about how uh, the crime rate interacts with the economy, interacts with law enforcement, corruption, and legal resources. So from the point of view, again, of these dependencies, this is a qualitative model. But from the point of view of the county by county discrepancies, uh, we were able to tie this to some base underlying data, as we talked about a moment ago. 
So thank you again very much for your time today. I hope you find this kind of an analysis helpful, whether we're talking paralegal interventions in Liberia or other kinds of interventions in other parts of the developing world. We think that this kind of interactive, hybrid, qualitative, quantitative analysis can be really helpful to understand the impacts of things like aid donations. Again, my name is Lorian Pratt, and I'm with Quintelia. Thanks again for your time.